in the first session i just uh, briefed about what exactly is design thinking and uh, which leads to innovation <clears throat> uh, so we are here gathered to discuss about the original syllabus how exactly we can teach this to the students so that is the major intention so first session was dedicated completely to the introduction now <clears throat> Uh, let us just uh, start with the syllabus i'll not get you uh, okay uh, make you bold or something like that same thing uh, i'll be showing you pictures and explaining whatever is there on the screen screen so <clears throat> most of us are here to know what exactly is the syllabus where exactly we can get the content to be delivered to the students how uh, we can teach the design thinking so everyone knows how to teach but how we can in a better way teach design thinking to the first year students so, so as uh, the students are new to the college new to the institution they will be learning the subject design thinking all of them even in the first semester and the second semester alternatively uh, students who have entered the engineering college will study design thinking. <clears throat> so it is made as a compulsory subject. So let us start with the first module. Uh, the first module, I'll just, just give a brief okay, description of the syllabus. I will not go uh, deep into any of the content of the modules. My intention or my uh, job is to give you in detail vision of third module but anyways as i am starting the session of modules so it is my duty to brush up syllabus as far as btu is concerned so the first module itself is process of design so what is the process of design or what is design process what exactly happens in that and i'll uh, okay one more thing for the betterment of professors, what I'll do is I'll just show where we can get the content for module one. Module three, I'll be sharing uh, the remaining the speakers, okay, who will be speaking about uh, the particular modules will give you. But still, I'll show you how exactly we can get the content from the sir, audio idea, la. Audio is there, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. sir. Sorry, sir. If uh, I'm not audible to any of you, it may be your uh, okay internet connectivity issue. So please resolve that. Sorry to say this. So all right. So uh, so I'll just uh, tell or I'll just okay make you understand how exactly you people know how to use Google, but still uh, it is my job now to tell you how exactly to get the content from the internet. Right. So first thing first, uh, first module is process of design or exactly speaking design process. Okay. What exactly design process requires? It requires design thinking as we have already discussed. So before starting the syllabus, we have to in detail discuss about the design thinking process itself so that so that the students will clearly understand what is this process, how exactly this process is going to help them in future or during their okay study in four years or whatever it may be when whenever they come out of the college also when they face an interview okay there are certain processes which happens in a business model or even in an industry let us say okay so initial thing is the design and process of design is very much important for the engineering student to understand so first of all in the first module we will tell them what exactly is design process how is it uh, okay related to them very importantly so people may think okay some of us even some of us think why they have okay introduced this subject what is the use of the subject okay but still uh, it is an important subject because all the industries which are making products okay final end products are using design thinking nowadays they have shifted completely from Okay, see, there were some of the conventional uh, means, okay, to uh, satisfy customers and uh, to gain revenue. But now the things have changed. 
now the things have changed all of them have adopted okay design thinking process okay in their process flow initial thing is the design thinking even if you consider business process modeling or business models initial thing is design thinking they will uh, okay uh, while while we discuss uh, the third module i'll explain it in detail so first module is process of design or design process wherein we will teach students what exactly design thinking is okay how do we understand design thinking so these are some of the topics under the first module so when i say topics in maybe one hour or two hours we can complete all the topics but we have to take the case studies we have to take the case studies for each and every topic and relate it to the design thinking process and tell that to the students that is very important as far as the subject is concerned so first thing is shared model and team based design i'll tell you what exactly these things are in a very few lines or few sentences then theory and practice in design thinking explore presentation designers across globe so there is a mistake actually uh, in a syllabus when you take out the syllabus there is a mistake signers it has become signers it is designers explore presentation designers across globe mvp or prototyping mvp is nothing but the minimal vi minimum viable product okay so in this module we will be discussing with the students about the shared model in team based design so design uh, if it is given to a single person so yes yes sir yes, yes sir this is module 1 this is module 1 sir this is module 1 so when whenever we say okay a single person is handling the design okay content of that product then we do not say it is a shared model or team based design when a team is completely involved in it okay when a team is completely involved in it so they have to share certain things right so they have to share drawings they have to share notes they have to share okay empathized uh, solutions or whatever it is they have to share each and everything so how to do it there are many ways to do it i'll just give you an example here so if you search internet by this name re representation affordances of shared models and team based design so you have to request full text pdf or else you know uh, different ways of downloading the papers so re representation affordances of shared models and team based design so it consists of case study also through which you can clearly explain about the shared models and team based designs okay how exactly the shared models work which are the shared models when i say team based design okay teams are involved in designing certain thing so how exactly shared models are working so for example so catia or let us say uh, a software which i am using okay in order to sketch my component of engine let us say so i have to share this among my team members how it will be done it can be done online yes of course it can be done online so that is uh, not an issue but there are certain models built up by okay business models okay or shared models which have been built up so what are those shared models how exactly the sharing can be done in team based design so this is one perspective so when i consider the second topic here theory and practice in design thinking they yes, go we are not able to hear you sir is it so sir audible audible it's audible sir for us it is audible audible sir okay thank you thank you ma'am uh, ma'am maybe maybe uh, connectivity issue may be there uh, please check it out ma'am okay the second topic is uh, theory and practice in design thinking so when we do design thinking so we have so much of theory okay i'll show you a book wherein you can learn design thinking like anything there is a data book for that okay handbook for that there are so many books available on internet okay pdf download is available directly but we have to search the topics that is the issue we have to search the topics and when you consider this theory can it be practiced exactly see this is a, a point of concern so theory is different can we practice it for all the problems we have day to day life we have problems industries we have problems if we consider our organizations we have problems in the departments we have problems okay everywhere we have problems can this be related to each and every problem okay that is what we need to uh, speak with the students 
with respect to the second topic. So when you uh, type this, okay, the co-evolution of theory and practice in design thinking or mind the oddness trap. Okay, you can get this paper. PDF is directly available. You can just download it and read it. Uh, collect the content which is necessary for students. Okay, it is a vast, uh, I mean, uh, okay, the content is vast. So you can select whatever you want to be taught to the uh, student. So then you can uh, move on with it. So I'm just giving you examples. You can search for uh, many such papers because, see, we all know there is no prescribed textbook for this, right? So many of the professors, uh, my uh, uh, senior most professors are uh, trying, okay, their level best to bring a book uh, with respect to the syllabus. It may take time, but we have to start teaching now. So that is the issue. We have to start st teaching. Students are already there in the institution. So we have to start teaching. So how to teach? So these are certain methods which I'm just uh, telling you. So the co-evolution of theory and uh, practice and design thinking are mind the oddness trap. This will give you the complete information about the theory and practice which go hand in hand in design thinking. So the next topic again, explore presentation designers across globe. So we find a lot of industries diversified, okay, with respect to their products, right? So all of them are not situated in India. They are diversified in the sense throughout the world, throughout the globe, we find different kinds of industries. Okay, so in each of the industries, the design will be presented in front of the customer by the presentation designer very simple words generally speaking so the design in any kind of industry you take okay the presentation has to be made once the design is final okay after involving in design thinking after finalizing the design so finally that the, that design has to be okay presented in front of the customer or the end user let us say so who will do that ceo or the owner of the company or a programmer, let us say, or a CNC lathe worker. No, 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 no. So there is a particular person or a team, let us say, who will present that design in front of the customer in a very colorful and attractive way. Informative, of course. Informative, colorful, attractive. You can add words. Okay. So he is called as a presentation designer. So we will explore the different products, different types of industries different presentation designers how exactly they work okay again i'll uh, give you a hint about this you can just uh, go through this uh, paper uh, you have to request full text pdf but you know the ways of uh, downloading it so innovation and culture exploring the work of designers across the group so here you can clearly uh, see how exactly the designer work how exactly they present their designs in front of the end users so all the things are available here, not only in this paper, we have different papers, okay, uh, which are concentrating on this particular subject. Hope you're not getting bored. Uh, see, we are here because we need to see the syllabus and we need to know how exactly we can uh, teach the students about it. So last thing is MVP or prototyping. If you type MVP, uh, it will give some other meaning anyway mvp minimum viable product or prototyping or the difference between them you can get a lot of information in the google itself in the google itself so i'll just tell you what exactly mvp is or the difference between mvp and prototyping prototyping can be on a piece of paper also so you cannot refer this prototype as dummy okay you can just say this prototype is a reference but when i when i say mvp that is minimal minimum viable product so you can build your whole output or the product on this particular thing only so you're not throwing it out you're not throwing it out you will present it in front of the customer if he says okay you are going to build okay your product end product on the basis of this minimum viable product only but when i say prototype Okay, again, we have two types of prototypes. I'll explain when I uh, enter into the third module. So anyways, so this is the difference between Sir, paper links. Uh, all right, sir, if you have, would have uh, taken a screenshot. Anyways, okay, sir, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, no problem. 
okay uh, so minimal uh, minimum uh, viable product so upon this you can build your original product so i'll give you a very best example uh, many of you are uh, tech savvy people only because we are tech savvy uh, so what we do is we use mobiles so whenever there is a new lo uh, application launch so you may have seen a beta rollout beta rollout so that is nothing but the minimum viable product it is not the final product it is not the final application which has all the features which has got all the features it is the beta version of the final application so that you can experience okay you can experience what exactly this app looks like what are the features of it if you have any feedback you can just give it to the okay designer or the program developer they will again redo the process so that is minimal viable product minimum viable product so second uh, module is tools for design thinking so what are the tools for design thinking similarly if you search for each and every uh, topic i am not uh, going to again get into the topics so or show you how exactly uh, you can search because you know already how to search things i have just given you some examples by, by considering the first module so second module is <coughs> sorry tools for design thinking so we are speaking about design thinking from morning right so what are the tools for design thinking we 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 tell the students that design thinking is very important in their life okay even if it is their day to day life or even when they enter into an industry okay the design thinking is very important and all the industries are following this design thinking but what if we do not tell them how exactly we do design thinking what if we do not tell them which are the tools for design thinking so that is of no use at all so we have to discuss about the tools for design thinking wherein we can clearly see okay these are the uh, topics under this module real time design interaction capture and analysis how exactly are uh, okay in real time design interaction can be captured and analyzed we have different methods okay we have so many methods you can explain uh, okay three four or even five of them in front of the students you can show videos you can take the case studies okay or even test case when you consider it industry you can okay uh, consider a test case and show them how exactly the real time design interaction is captured and then analyzed then enabling efficient collaboration and digital space so collaboration as i have already told you so many teams will be working on okay one single project let us say okay so collaboration between the teams and collaboration between the people in a single team is very very important if we have ego the owner will suffer so enabling efficient collaboration in digital space what is digital space whatever we are using now is nothing but the digital space okay so how exactly the collaboration is enabled efficiently <clears throat> sir uh, link for mvp so just a second what we can do as we can just type here So you can get uh, see minimum viable product meaning what exactly is it we, we have wikipedia itself okay and we and if we want uh, the difference see minimum viable product versus prototype what is a prototype mm, all right uh, so the difference here you can see the difference hope everyone seeing the screen Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So here you can see many differences. All right. So what is a prototype? Forums they can take. What is an M MVP? Examples of MVP. Because uh, we do not have a textbook, we have to work uh, a bit harder in order to get these informations. <clears throat> yes ma'am thank you so i was here somewhere right yeah next empathy for for design why should we empathize for design we should empathize customers we were talking about empathizing the customers or contacting them okay studying their mental behavior all these things come comes under the first component that is empathize 
So why should we empathize design? So that is the very important thing we should uh, tell to the students. Collaboration and distributed design. So distribution. So normally what has happened now, people are working from home. Uh, okay, mechanical industries or even uh, hardware, let us say hardware. Okay, they are not working from home, but many people uh, are working from home. So the design is distributed, let us say. Even in mechanical industries also, okay, people who are working on the design are working from home, but not from home, home station, let us say. Okay, they have called uh, people back to Bangalore and they have told them to sit here and work. Whenever they require, they'll call them, they should go. Okay, they should be in a condition to go. That is why now it has, the, the world has changed. Okay, work from home station. Work from home station. Station in the sense, Bangalore is station and we, they are working here. So they have distributed. So let us say, someone is there in hyderabad <clears throat> okay the same design team uh, member is there in hyderabad someone is in madras and someone is in uh, bangalore okay so how exactly the collaboration takes place so collaboration is important i told you right so collaboration is very important no ego should be there so we should in, be in contact with all of them in the team as well as among the teams also so how exactly the collaboration is done okay this is what we are going to teach when I talk about the second uh, module, third module is uh, actually very simple. I'll share you the PPT also. I'm going to discuss about the third module only. So once I share you the PPT, you can just refer it and tell that to students. No issues at all. So design thinking in IT. So what is IT? Many, uh, many of the students do not know what exactly IT industry is. So first of all, we need to tell them what exactly IT industry is. How they have implemented design thinking in it. What is waterfall model? Why they are not using waterfall model now and they have moved to agile methodology. So I'll explain all these things in detail. Don't worry about it. So why they have moved to agile methodology? What is business process modeling? Okay, what exactly is business process modeling? How exactly the business process modeling is associated with design thinking? Or design thinking is associated with business process modeling. What are the advantages? Okay, a company or an MNC may get from, okay, mixing up these two things. Tandemly, they will uh, move, okay. That is design thinking as well as business process, uh, business process modeling. They will move tandemly or they go hand in hand and they will give profit to the company. How? Okay, I'll tell you. Next, <clears throat> agile and virtual collaboration environment. So virtual collaboration as I, I was just uh, talking about, okay, work from home environment. So someone is there in uh, America, let us say. So uh, many of the companies now, they work for uh, okay, foreign countries, let us say America. Okay, why they are outsourcing work to India? Because we are low cost country. Because we are low cost country. We see towards Sri Lanka, we see towards Afghanistan, but America see towards us. They see that we are the low cost uh, country okay ctc maximum ctc okay never exceeds their range so that is why they outsource the things to us right so someone is sitting there let us say a team lead is sitting in america and he is discussing about the process processes let us say to be going on on the development of like new software so how exactly the virtual collaboration happens i have given a case study here i have taken a case study i have taken a paper and uh, uh, explained what exactly must be the scenario in order to get the virtual collaboration environment agile i'll explain it to you very simple and uh, beautiful thing is agile actually so scenario based prototyping so prototyping uh, should not be done okay just by wild assumptions it should be based on scenario so what is the scenario for example if i consider an app whatsapp let us say so when I click that app, so this is the scenario, let us say this is the story or scenario. When I press that app icon or click that app icon, the app should open. What should open? All the contacts should open or only the screen should open. So these things, scenario, how exactly the scenario is, what comes first, what comes next and what comes last is the scenario I'm talking about. So this is, so depending on the scenario, prototyping is done and that is known as the scenario. Scenario based prototyping. So, all the things uh, which are mentioned here, okay, will be explained uh, now. 
so design thinking for strategic innovations as i have told you design thinking always leads to innovative solutions so they both are interconnected so if you want to do innovation design think or think about the design let us say okay if at all you do design thinking you will get innovation so growth how exactly the growth happens you can take the case studies and you can tell storytelling representations just as i mentioned okay storytelling scenario okay what you can take a case study and explain student comes through cet he selects the seat in our college he comes uh, okay exactly on this particular date the college was open for the first year students they came in first week went on with the uh some sort of okay brainstorming or anything like that then after that the syllabus started after one month first cie or continuous internal evaluation happened so like this so this is the storytelling uh, representations you can give any example or you can explain where does dt uh, comes here see this is the storytelling what i'm telling so here we should input our design thinking we should input our design thinking why in order to bring good result among them right good result among them so strategic foresight what should be the foresight of the strategy okay of innovation which we have changes which we need to make sense making does does the strategic innovations really make sense yes of course in many of the cases they do not make sense at all so strategic innovation what i'll do is i just want to go to see some uh, i have dreamt about uh, yesterday night okay a dream, a dream came into my mind that is, I will go to Mars today. So what should I do? I can do design thinking and I should, uh, okay, I, I can search Google, I can, I can search internet, I can search YouTube and make a spacecraft, let us say. No, not, that is not at all possible. Is that making sense? No, it is not at all sense making. So maintenance relevance. So how does the maintenance is related okay, to the strategic inno innovations? We are planning for TT. So value redefinition. So already we are manufacturing a product. Okay, WhatsApp already has its own product. WhatsApp. Okay, Facebook, let us say, has WhatsApp, its own product. So now the value is getting demoralized or let us say people are okay fed up of it. They are bored of it. So what should I do now? I should redefine the value by adding certain features into it. So that is value redefinition. Next, extreme competition. We have competition around us okay we we face competition every day in all the things in all the things we face competition how exactly this extreme competition leads to strategic innovations for design thinking that should be our uh, motive of teaching students experience design how, how the design is experienced standardization how can we standardize the strategic innovations let us say for design thinking humanization of course say uh, this particular point humanization as I have told you design thinking is human centric so every point of design thinking or strategic innovation should be touched with human values should be touched with human values okay what if I give this product to the customer will he be angry will he cry will he laugh will he dance so everything so humanity touch should be given to each and every aspect of strategic innovation as well as for the design thinking creative culture okay we should develop uh, not we in industries how exactly they develop creative culture should be taught to the students rapid prototyping how exactly the rapid prototyping is done so for mechanical students it is uh, very much easy because see <clears throat> rapid prototyping they will study in uh, seventh semester how exactly the prototyping is done right strategy and organization okay what strategy should be used by the organization in order to build the business model or design the business model to have maximum benefit to have maximum benefit so these are the four modules you need to explain to the students okay so we don't know how exactly the question paper will be or what will be the form of questions uh <clears throat> so so the four four modules are there in which you have topics to be discussed with the students all right sir so the final module will be design thinking workshop okay here uh, 
we have discussed about the five components from morning you are just listening to these five components right empathize design idea prototype and test empathize design idea prototype and test so this is a circular process as i have showed you it is never never linear so <coughs> it just went off ma'am okay we will discuss that uh, at the end of the session so uh, every institution has to organize eight days of workshop with respect to this design thinking process or this design thinking uh, syllabus let us say okay so experts have to be invited and they should speak about uh, whatever we have okay the syllabus or on empathizing designing ideating prototyping okay testing whatever it is okay so eight days of workshop has to be conducted once all the four modules are completed Oh, so sorry uh, this was okay i was there in the first uh, this one itself right yeah so let us move to the third module uh before moving into the third module so this is completely related to the it industry i will speak uh, in general so i am not an it guy uh, i don't know what exactly happens in the it industry but as far as my knowledge is concerned related to the generalized topics of it industry or related to the uh, design thinking process happening in the it industry i have uh, cumulatively okay summed up some of the content and i'm going to present it in front of you uh, <clears throat> if you have any doubts which are beyond my uh, answerable ability so we will discuss it and we will come to a conclusion again we will uh, take up take it up as a problem statement and we will iterate and come to a conclusion that this is the solution for the problem if at all i am not able to answer the questions which are related to it which are related to it <clears throat> so these are the contents uh, to be covered uh, design thinking in it industry that has to be explained to the students of course then design thinking to business process modeling that is uh, what exactly is the relationship between them how exactly they are related when i talk about the business process models okay how exactly design thinking can be incorporated in it then design thinking for agile software development first of all we will see what exactly is agile methodology okay and how exactly design thinking can be adopted in the agile methodology for developing the software finally uh, as i've already told you virtual collaboration how exactly collaboratively teams can work virtually even though they are <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> even though they are at different places on earth how exactly they can collaborate that too virtually finally scenario based prototyping what exactly is scenario based prototyping almost all of these i have explained okay in brief but still uh, we will go in detail now so what is scenario based prototyping how exactly the scenario based prototyping okay can be done what is a scenario how exactly the scenario can be represented how exactly the customers get benefited from the scenario based prototyping now first of all uh, we need to understand what exactly is an it industry let us say that i have a grocery shop i we or whoever it is have a grocery shop wherein all the requirements daily requirements are sold okay so once this grocery shop becomes famous okay so initial stage initial stage i may be okay struggling to open this i may have borrowed some money but still okay when this grocery shop there is no other grocery shop around it for around five kilometers so people will come people will pour in of course so when there is no grocery shop and if you are giving a quality uh okay products if you are giving quality products to the customers so obviously people will pour in so once the people will pour in or once okay uh, the frequency of people visiting the grocery shop and buying things okay gets uh you know a large quantity or huge quantity there will be cash flow of course there will be cash flow enormous amount of cash will be flowing okay see i have started a, a new grocery store now maybe after 10 months or even a year so the increase in cash flow will be seen increase in the cash flow will be seen 
So when the increase in cash flow is more, so I will be having different accounts, my account, my wife's account, my uh, child's account. Okay, different accounts will be there and I have to maintain those accounts. Until the first day of starting this grocery, I was sleeping for around seven hours per day. I was sleeping for our, around seven hours per day or eight hours per day, let us say. I used to go to walking. I used to sit and eat with my uh, wife, okay, uh, even children, all, the, all, all of them. But now when the cash is flowing like anything, okay, and I have multiple accounts to handle. So what has happened now? Okay, the transaction uh, transactions are more and the transactions are even more. So what has happened now? I am sleeping for around two to three hours, maybe because of the tension, because of the stress. Okay, so I am thinking about the account. What has happened to that account? Has the money transferred? To, has been transferred to that account? So what? How to withdraw money tomorrow morning? So like this, all the problems will. <coughs> so all the problems will occur now. So I will think about it. Maximum stress will be there on my mind. So I'll be stressed out. I'll be stressed out and that will affect my performance or efficiency. Now I will see an advertisement. Okay. While going to get the, uh, let us say inventory. Okay. On the way, I will see a big holding having an advertisement XYZ information technology or XYZ infotech. We give solutions to your problems through software. We give solutions to your problems through software so many of us know what exactly is an it industry i am just following the procedure of uh, teaching students that's it okay don't uh, please feel uh, bad about this so i'm just trying to explain uh, what, exactly, uh, what exactly is an it industry so i see an So now I'll see an ad. Oh. XYZ Infotech, we give solutions to your financial or account problems, yeah, 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 sir, accounts or anything. Shunila, madam, make a problem. Sir, Mukun, sir. Mukun, sir. Mukun, sir. Yeah. So they promise us, let us say, to use technology to solve all our problems. Okay, whatever the problems I'm having now. Okay, maintaining different accounts. Okay, maintaining the cash flow, uh, booking the inventory, going to the inventory and getting them, getting okay, giving the order to the uh, inventory, everything. Okay, transactions or whatever it may be. So they are promising me to use technology, or they will use technology so that I will solve, or they will solve my problem. So. Now, what is an IT company? So this is what an IT company is, XYZ Infotech. They build softwares to make other businesses run smoothly. So ATMs run by softwares. Okay, whatever it is, whatever you see uh, the, in the world around you. So almost, okay, which are digital in nature runs by the softwares, right? So IT companies are those which build softwares to make other businesses run smoothly. Now, let us say I'm an engineer or okay, uh, I have completed my engineering a long back, let us say uh, 10 years back, but still I know what to do and how to tackle these problems. I know we can create a software in order to solve my problems. I will contact my friend who was my uh, batchmate studying in computer science or information science. Okay, working for some other firm, I will contact him and I'll say, buddy, let us uh, plan a meeting wherein we can discuss about solving my problems by building specific pieces of a software let us say okay resource planning or even <clears throat> whatever it is okay cash flow transaction flow or accounts okay maintaining all these things how exactly we can do that so he will come and meet me he will sit and he will discuss all the things then with a very low cost we will design a software okay congratulations my grocery company has got its it department so I'm not outsourcing, okay, my grocery company itself, my grocery store has become a company now. Inside my company, I have got a IT department. I've got an IT department. So <clears throat> as I have told you, IT companies build or maintain software so that businesses run very smoothly. 
anyone who builds or maintains this software belongs to the IT sector. So when I say design thinking, uh, as I've already told you, it is a human centered design. Okay, generally, if we speak, what exactly D school, okay, Stanford University, actually, it has a D school school of design, they teach design thinking, it, they have, okay, uh, mixed up this design thinking in their curriculum, in each and everything, they teach design thinking, how exactly we should think of the design, okay, with respect to this subject, with respect to this syllabus, or each topic, each and every topic, okay, so, uh, when I say design thinking, as I already have told you, uh, it is based on five important components or five stages or five processes. Empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. So when I say empathize, we can do interviews, we can do shadowing, we can just follow people and uh, see their behavior. Okay, we can seek, okay, knowledge uh, uh, in order to understand things. But the thing is, while we empathize, we should not be judgmental. We should never be judgmental. We should be always non-judgmental. While empathizing, we may feel that, okay, um, what is he really requiring? Okay, what is the real requirement of this person? Okay, is he a mad person or what? We should not say that. We should always be non-judgmental so that, or let us say, okay, we have presented a design already. He is not liking it. He is, he is wanting to have some of the changes in that particular design. I should not say, okay, this person is an idiot. Okay, he doesn't know anything about uh, the design which I have done. This person cannot understand what I have done. No, we should not be like that. We should never be judgmental. We should always be non judgmental. By doing all these things, we have collected the data. Let us now define the problem, problem definition, personas, role objectives. We should define the role objectives. What exactly is the objectives okay, uh, of this particular problem? What will be uh, obtained after incorporating or after finding the solutions? Okay, decisions has to be made. Many decisions has to be made when you have when you are going to formulate a problem. Challenges have to be kept in mind. Okay, which are the challenges to be faced while okay uh, while while trying to solve this problem? Pain points. Which are the pain points? Am I going to get into loss? Okay, by adopting this particular thing, am I going to waste my time and okay, uh, incur losses on my department or even on my uh, institution or even on my industry as a whole? Okay, these are the pain points which have to be addressed e equally. Once definition is done, finally, ideate. Okay, ideate means we have to get, get different solutions. Okay, different solutions for that particularly so first of all how to do that share ideas let us say we have a team of professors or associate assistant professor whatever it is a team of lecturers so share ideas i am going to do like this i am going to do like this okay is it worth it really the ideas are worthy or not can i implement this idea okay can this be the solution of the problem we have stated together okay diverge converge there is no problem at all. You can diverge on things. You can converge on things, but together. But together. If it is only you and the problem is with respect to your life, don't worry about anyone and uh, take the decisions. But when it is concerned to an institution, an organization, an industry or whatever it is, so we have to involve all the teams or all the team members, discuss the ideas, think whether the ideas are worthy or not, diverge on the ideas, converge on the ideas. Finally, yes and we should always develop this particular word. Yes and is there anything else we can do? Only this much. Is there anything else we can do? So this is what the culture we have to develop. Okay, prioritize. So we have many solutions, let us say. Okay, by iterations, we have developed many solutions, but prioritize the situation exactly. What exactly that student needs from us? What exactly the student needs from us? He may be having a financial difficulty. Okay, he may be having some other issues with uh, his health. Okay, he may be having issues with studies. He may be having many issues, but which issues, which issue has to be focused first? That is the prioritization what we have to make or the solutions. Okay, we have different types of solutions. Let us say which solution is or to be adopted initially. Okay, so this is what the ideate process is. Finally, uh, using uh, different methods, mockups, 
okay storyboards uh, then uh, other iterative uh, options we can build the prototypes so uh, in the first session i told you fail fast fail fast okay during this process prototype or even when we are testing the prototype fail fast is the real term which is used in the industries okay even in the mncs also failing fast is nothing but say we should encourage the team to innovate when we do innovations obviously we will fail first but the fail has to be very fastly done the fail has to be fast okay within no time we have to again regain our consciousness and begin again we should go for the ideate process then finally test so we have to understand impediments what exactly uh, is happening or what exactly will happen what will work and what will not work and we have to iterate quickly so generally speaking design thinking can be summarized like this philosophy because we empathize okay customers we empathize end user we empathize many okay people we empathize many things therefore philosophy plus set of tools define idea prototype test so these are the tools of course and defining itself has certain tools ideating itself has certain tools prototyping itself has certain tools okay test itself is so am i audible sir yes 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 we wish you are audible please continue thank you sir thank you thank you Continue, please. I hope I'm not boring you, sir. So many senior professors are there. With all due respect, I'm not boring you, I think. So philosophy no, sir, plus... No, no, sir. Please continue. Yeah. Philosophy plus a set of tools gives us the solution for the problem stated. So philosophy because we empathize okay uh, we empathize on the basis of philosophy okay we cannot just go to a customer directly and say what is your problem what are the problems faced by you by using a product no it is not like that we have to adopt philosophy and we have to adopt a different set of tools then we can find the solutions for the problems So when I say IT industry, uh, as we all know, uh, by seeing uh, uh, the admissions also, we know that the IT industry is very much booming, booming from uh, a decade or maybe from past two decades. Okay, so how exactly IT industry work? It works on the project management. So a customer, let us say, will give a project to develop a complete software or even bits of it or whatever it is. Okay, so a project is given to the IT industry and that has to be completed by the people in the industry okay there are certain teams or several teams which are dedicated to this single project okay teams will be working on shifts also okay they will be work working uh, collaboratively collocatedly collocatedly in the sense in the same office or even in this particular time from their home from their home station whatever it is so the project has to be completed how the project will be completed so nowadays as i have already told you they are adopting okay they wow. are adopting agile methodology a very beautiful yeah. technique a very beautiful yeah. technique i will relate this agile methodology with our work third bina okay so this is an interesting thing kindly uh, try to okay. listen so nowadays they are adopting agile methodology in order to complete the project from initial stage to the final stage from planning to the launch they are adopting this agile methodology i will relate this agile methodology with our own institutions okay engineering colleges very badly uh, or simply or generally speaking with the engineering colleges and i'll explain okay but anyways first of all let me tell you what exactly is agile methodology so a project is given okay uh, i'll give you an example like this so a customer will go to an app developer will go to an 
app developer same thing okay same uh, uh, example we will take as we took in the morning whatsapp okay i have money to invest i have money to invest so let us say like this i will give you money or i will invest money for you to develop a new app which is just like that of whatsapp okay so you have to develop you have to think about it you have to see the look and holes we have okay you have to see the advantages you have to see the features you have to see the features which people like which people do not like you have to go dig deep into it and you have to come out with a solution and get me an app okay ready by the end of let us say okay well you tell me the time the customer will ask okay what what is the time taken for this i will agree as a software developer or app developer i will agree okay sir i will do that because i have developed so many apps uh, just like that so i will agree because uh, more amount of uh you know investment is involved in it so i will agree with that and i will say sir the app will be developed or prototyped in 12 months from today if you give me advance okay from 12 months from today 12 months after 12 months you will get your okay beta uh, let us say beta version you will get your beta version finally you can give the feedback and we will work on it and we will again take two to three months after that so we will finish it off and we will launch it but so just uh, uh, try to assume what will be the condition of that particular uh, customer whatsapp is already there in coming 12 months or even in 15 months there will be major changes happening in whatsapp so what this app developer is telling he will incorporate the features which are there as of now he will incorporate some more features also okay no problem but what are those features are they relating to the changing features of whatsapp in the upcoming days no no one knows that so he is taking 12 months of time in that 12 months of time whatsapp will again release new features so what should i do the customer will think like this what should i do so instead of that bit by bit so my response will be like this so this was the case when they used uh, waterfall method i assume yeah so now what i will tell him that is sir i am going to follow agile methodology i am going to follow agile methodology wherein every month i will roll out okay i a bit of this product i will roll out a bit of this product uh, is there any confusion in this shall i go slowly all right so no problem i think so what i'll tell to him that sir now what i'll do is instead of giving you a whole project okay once completed in 12 months or 15 months what i will do is a small bit of the project or the product will be given to you in one month right so when you see that you can give us the feedback within a day or two we will give you the time frame of that so you can give feedbacks on that immediately we will implement that okay and start the second process or next part or next bit of the project so normally these are called as sprints these are called as sprints in the it industry say i am able to understand these things because uh, my sister is an it uh, okay she works in an it company so i i asked her i begged her to explain uh, these things to me so in detail she explained and that is why i'm telling this uh, in front of you so this is how i think we should explain this to the students also so bit by bit we are going to present our product in front of the customer so at the end of 12 months whatever the features whatsapp whatsapp have up, updated so we can get hold of it and we can implement that every month we can implement that every month or every month the customer will be getting a piece of his product and the presentation is also done he can give the feedback on it so once work is done on the previous part of the product next they will move on to the next step or the next sprint let us say or next bit of the product so it involves say these steps plan design develop test deploy review launch first part this is about the first part now i'm not talking about the complete project or the full project okay plan design develop test deploy review launch first bit completed 
So immediately after this, customer will review it. Okay, he will say, okay, these are okay. This is okay. You can go with the second part. Or else, if a feedback is negative, let us say, okay, he wants something to be added or he wants something to be deleted. Immediately, we will consider this one only. If we will consider the first uh, part of the product and we will work on it immediately after that, we will move on to the second one, combining the first and two, combining the first one and the second one. So this is agile methodology. So this is the software development cycle uh, which is happening uh, as of now. So when I consider the frameworks of uh, agile methodology, we have Scrum, Kanban, XP, etc., etc., etc. Frameworks in the sense on which this agile methodology is based, on which the agile methodology is based. We have a handbook for Scrum. I never knew about it. So when I just uh, was searching about uh, the topics, so I saw a complete handbook for Scrum is present. So uh, let us have a 10 minutes break uh, and then we will again uh, join. Okay, sir. Is it okay? Okay. very minimum right so when this is very minimum how can we efficiently deliver or how the tasks are completed let us say when the time frame is given okay one week first task should be completed second week second task should be completed third week third task to be shipped so like that okay how do we quick fix it how do we quick fix the problems using solutions obviously by using design thinking methodology obviously by using design thinking methodology so when i consider it industry so what exactly uh, uh, happens over there customers will be having problems that will be given to the it industry people which will be having teams designated to do particular work correct so it industry again the documentation of the problems or the things which are obtained from the or the feedbacks obtained from the customers will be documented then they go for agile methodology as of now uh, as my knowledge is okay, concerned so agile methodology so once agile methodology is done final solution in a given time frame will be arrived at so that solution is given to the customer if it is satisfied or the customer is satisfied then he will give a nod and get that software from them or else if at all he wants some of the changes negatively or positively let us say so he will give the feedback to the uh, industry people or the teams assigned to do that particular task following which the same cycle continues following which the same cycle continues so as i've already told you that this is the agile model of project management wherein design comes into picture or first thing wherein the design of documents or design documents are uh, okay stored documented or okay kept in some uh, server like thing or anything like that and prototypes are okay again the documents with respect to the prototypes or the development of prototypes is done here on the design stage development is done development of the software by iterations giving demo in front of uh, the teams team lead or whoever it is okay concerned people and the feedback is obtained 
even even when uh, the sprints are considered or agile model of uh, project management is considered see the demo is uh, sometimes given directly to uh, directly to the customer itself so if design thinking is incorporated in this uh, we will come to that so if design thinking is incorporated in this so what will happen there will be a particular problem statement so uh, there is no need to go to the customer again and again after each sprint there is no need to go to the customer again and again so we have people we have teams inside the industry itself okay ui team uh, user experience team so those are the teams which are responsible for giving the feedbacks so after the development through iterations demos are given feedbacks are obtained again it will move through or pass through the quality assurance qa team okay wherein again the iterations are done demo is given in front of them or the demo is taken from the uh, people, quality assurance people, and the feedback is given. If everything is all right, no feedback, okay, positive feedback will be given. Okay, you can go ahead with the next sprint or next part of the product. If at all there is any, uh, okay, margin of error or whatever it is, okay, small adjustments to be made. So again, that will be told to the teams which are really assigned to do that particular work. Next, deployment. So production or uh, generation of that software, then technical support, tech team will be okay assigned for that. So which will be working on that particular project only. For example, Apple iPod, iPad, let us say. So if they have rolled it out, they have a separate team for that particular thing only. So if I uh, have any issues with this Apple iPad, so I have to contact that particular team so that they will Sir, I'm not responsible for uh, sharing the feedback, sir. Uh, so anyways, so, so that particular support team is assigned. So again, the same uh, thing is utilized from the customer in order to get more benefits from the product. Okay, then again, brainstorming before design, brainstorming is very much uh, required. Requirement analysis has to be done. What exactly is the requirement of the customer? what exactly he wants from this app or what exactly he wants from this okay software okay how the testing to be done how exactly which testing software to be used in order to test the software so all these things will come into picture and this is as you can see a circular process that is one after the other the things will repeat final thing when we okay everything is okay and the customer is ready to take the product or the software we are going to roll out okay the software so design thinking and agile method i already have given you a hint and already i have uh, told you how exactly these two are combined so whenever uh, we do a survey okay you can do the survey in the google itself how many it projects fail per year per month per week you can see so according to the research it is clearly seen that 30 to 35 percent or even 50 percent of the it projects fail the reason what is the major region reason so the major reason here is there is no collaboration between the teams and there is no communication communication we should talk with each other we should represent okay things in front of others so that everyone will understand whoever is there in the team or whoever is there in the process we'll understand what exactly is happening if you do not do that automatically the it projects will fail whereas collaboration so every team should be collaborated with each other so i will complete my work today so immediately the work has to be taken from the others also other the next uh, department or the next team and they have to work accordingly they have to collect data from the previous team what they have worked on okay what are the parameters or uh, the changes they should make whatever it is okay they have to collaborate and communicate so majorly this was uh, the reason why the it projects were failing but once they have adopted agile methodology it has improved the success rate by almost double by almost double by promoting better collaboration and communication but but okay when i say agile again think about it please think about it for yourself when i say agile we don't know which problem to solve right we know what is the way to solve the problem but which is the exact problem again thinking about it searching the real problem giving the problem statement itself takes time when i adopt agile methodology of course it is a very good method of 
giving a efficient product okay out but just to end the and still when we do not know what exactly the right problem is okay we cannot give solutions as fast as possible so this really shows the way for design thinking process so so as i have written here but agile only provides way to solve problems okay agile methodology it gives us uh, the best to way or the way to solve problems but how can one decide which is the right problem to solve yeah right so me padhna aata hu all right so how can one decide which is the right problem to solve so when we adopt design thinking when we empathize and come to a conclusion that this is the original problem faced by the customer or the end user then we can easily solve the problem using agile methodology so this is where design thinking plays a vital role so now people have adopted agile methodology people have adopted design thinking yes we are talking about it from morning but is it very simple or easy to combine these two and just roll it in the industry and say you people work on the design thinking team you people work on the agile team you should work together collaboratively communicatively is it really easy so this combining uh, both the design thinking and agile methodology is not at all an easy task it requires a total culture shift okay we are adopted for a different culture from morning we go there we sit we do some uh, okay we do the work conventionally but now a culture shift has to happen we have to think differently okay design thinking is entirely a different uh, thing we should mix emotions also in design thinking because when we empathize okay with the customers we have to think very very naturally and we have to okay so uh, we have to shift the entire culture itself and shifting itself is not at all sufficient okay uh, top management people what they do is they say okay this is the culture shift which we are making from today is it uh, is it easy for us to again adopt to that culture shift no okay say we had uh, lic visits okay we used to prepare some other documents then nac came a uh, total culture shift happened in our institutions right so we used now now then then nba came nba okay now you know uh, how exactly we prepare documents for nba so that is a whole culture shift a total culture shift which is happening in our institutions now nep 2020 so for that we have to prepare ourselves a new culture has to be adopted by us okay in order to follow nep 2020 right so this is what the culture shift um, i am talking about so this combination normally it values people over processes okay uh, so i'm not giving any importance for the process here yes processes are important but i'm not giving more value to the processes here i am giving value for the people so inside the it in the, inside the industry or even outside the industry the customer the users okay one app if it is released it is used by millions of users so at the user end we should think as the user okay we should think about their problems we should think what they re really require okay so this combination really requires or it values people over the processes so how to do this or how to uh, combine these two so organizations have to allocate right people for the projects that is the important thing so those who are really not interested should not be given the responsibility in any kind of work okay those who are really not interested should not should not be given the responsibility so allocate right people for the projects and they should ensure cultural compatibility between teams and the way design thinking and agile methodology work so it is the responsibility of them okay the people who are allotted for these kinds of projects okay combination of design thinking and agile methodology okay so pro projects <laughs> ಇದ್ ನೋಡಿ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಕಲ್ಸೈಟ್ ಬರ್ಲಿ ಈ ವರ್ಷ ನಾವು ಡಿಸ
so all right so a question just came and just went off uh, how to decide uh, one problem to solve sir see actually what happens is uh, uh, what really happens is see an app let us consider an app or a software to be developed so from the perspective of user okay we have many issues for example if i take a uh, okay game okay uh, game app let us say a cricket app so each individual will think differently he wants virat kohli to be the team member in that app someone wants australian uh, team member to be there in that app so finally how do you uh, conclude what is the real problem faced by the end user what is the real problem faced by the end user okay so as an end user so each and every one of us has our own uh, okay uh, brain and uh, brainstorming capability we require some different things but we cannot uh, you know fulfill all the desires we cannot fulfill all the desires finally we should come to a conclusion that okay this is what the end user requires what we can do we can have two teams both the teams india team and the australian team in the app okay wherein indian team contains or consists virat kohli as the captain okay like like that um, i was talking about so anyways so what are the best practices for combining design thinking and agile methodology so how do you combine uh, design thinking and agile methodology so uh, the industries should uh, think about investing in uh, user research okay user research in the sense empathizing okay user research who is the user who is using the software at the end who is using the software at the end so we should go to him so company may not give you leave to go to him and ask questions company may not provide you ta da whatever it is okay when this particular thing is concerned so uh, invest the companies or the industries should invest in user research then a clearly defined problem statement should be there so obviously when there is an investment in user research people will go to the users and they will get what exactly the requirements are of the users so once they get it the problem can be defined very beautifully okay clear definition of the problem can be made then build a productive team culture so productive team culture uh, obviously it depends on the individual also when i consider each and every industry even the uh, institutions also so productive team culture okay it depends on the individual as well as the management right so it depends on the individual as well as the management if we are getting perks and whatever is prescribed by the government if we are getting it we will become productive obviously but some of them are uh, really not productive at all so but still all of us okay working in it industries or in mechanical industries or wherever we are so we are productive but we need provocation we are productive but we need provocation we need encouragement right so uh, companies okay so <clears throat> should think about building a productive team culture optimal use of design thinking you should not use design thinking everywhere okay optimally or optimum usage of design thinking should be there where exactly you need design thinking you should use it so design patterns and the periodic testing should be done so this was the waterfall model i was talking about uh, wherein okay uh, this is the flow of the model or this is the flow of the process initially requirement analysis will be done okay depending on the requirement analyzed already system will be designed using the teams okay system will be designed or the software will be designed so once the system is designed implementation takes place okay immediately after the design uh, okay design of the system implementation takes place once the implementation is done testing is done okay you can take the example of atm itself okay they are developing a software for atm let us say they have okay uh, analyze the requirements of the customer what exactly they want does they really want to push buttons even now or do they require okay a uh, touch screen on the atm you <coughs> excuse me so using <coughs> these requirements the system is designed once the system is designed that is implemented directly 
so after the implementation system testing is done after the implementation system testing is done using the testing softwares okay um, system testing is done then the system is deployed okay system is deployed now when the system is deployed in the original atm let us say icici bank atm okay it is already been deployed now new system is deployed there okay new software is introduced there no push buttons only touch screen now the end user is complaining now the end user is complaining let us say no the touch screen is not working properly it may be a fault of anyone uh, we don't know it may be a fault of anyone maybe the software is corrupt or it has it has got some glitches or whatever it is so after the deployment if the customer says no i require changes is it possible here no usually when they use this waterfall model what they uh, did was once the system is tested it will be deployed once it is deployed and when the customer wants uh, wants some changes they should tell to or they would have told them go back to the design stage and uh, raise a new design uh, statement or something like that okay he should go back now okay so finally system maintenance will be there so what is the disadvantage here so immediately so continuous runoff processes continuous runoff processes there is no gap or there is no place for feedback there is no place for feedback if the requirement is not analyzed perfectly if the requirement is not analyzed correctly so what will happen to the final product so much of money will be invested on it right so <clears throat> so this is agile versus waterfall so when i consider waterfall so there is no gap for feedback define design develop test deploy so there will be a final outcome depending on that outcome okay we will give a feedback and again again we have to go back to the initial stage defining or analyzing the requirements or defining the problem so instead of that what we can do is using agile methodology like this sprints of okay the complete project is done so let us say this is the first sprint here okay define design develop test and deploy only a part of the project not the complete project only a part of the project so once it is done it is presented in front of the customer here sprints outcome okay this outcome is presented in front of the customer if he has anything to say okay then he will say he will give the feedback that feedback is incorporated again in this and then move to the next sprint next sprint see here you can see sprints cumulative outcome so it's not the outcome of second sprint only first plus second sprint okay the cumulative outcome of both the sprints then this cumulative outcome is showed or showed to the customer let us say or presented in front of the customer if he has any feedback good feedback bad feedback whatever it is he will give if at all there are some changes to be made they are incorporated again in this cumulative outcome and then that is again <clears throat> processed or the next sprint is formulated and then processed so in the next sprint finally we get the cumulative outcome of sprint one two and three so what are the advantages here so the advantages are uh, the customers clearly okay uh, the the output is visible to the customer very clearly so at every stage the output is visible to the customer very clearly and open for feedback and open for feedback so test so agile is an iterative and incremental method so always it should be or it is an iterative and incremental method of managing development and design test release design build configure and again test test release design build configure and then test so just uh, think about think for yourselves uh, in our institutions okay engineering colleges are we following agile methodology or are we following uh, waterfall model waterfall think for yourselves uh, i'm not teaching you anything see everyone's a professor here so just uh, assumption okay just assume uh, yeah we we uh, as an organization or an institution are we following agile methodology or waterfall model
okay uh, in my opinion i'll tell you in my opinion we are following the agile methodology only because see what is happening student has entered into the uh, institution okay engineering college so finally what is happening we are not letting the student out after the eighth semester or after four years directly giving him the exam okay at the end of the you know four years we are not doing that we are continuously monitoring him we are open for feedback that is every month we are conducting internal okay for that okay let us consider a single student only for every student we are conducting internals every month we will see the performance okay that is the feedback which we are obtaining after seeing the performance we will okay again design think or think about the design or think about the student's performance how to improve the student's performance let us say okay we will work on it second internals again we will see the performance sprints okay one sprint uh, one internal second internal third internal even uh, okay although uh, completion of the third internals he has not scored well or here the performance is not up to the mark we will again give the improvement test okay that is common uh, as of now in all the institutions so we will give the improvement test <clears throat> then finally we will assess him using the semester end examination yes e correct b not v as a whole university will assess him okay so this is what i thought okay so and the four years is again divided into four uh, eight semesters each semester is again divided into three tests okay assignments all these things so assessment tools these are the assessment tools but still we are sir, the product at the end correct sir, sir so can i put in a word yes sir yes sir uh, see, i think um, because you are taking this example yeah. i think uh, the the tests we conduct the semester and exams all would correspond to things like unit tests module tests in waterfall model it would, this would become agile if periodically we expose our students to uh, their potential employers or uh, maybe where yes, they going sir, to study yes, sir. That's for that's what we are doing so no no that is what uh, we are no, doing. let me can you give me a minute yeah 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 sorry uh, yeah so if we are able to take feedback from our uh, from their say potential employers and make changes to our curriculum changes to what we deliver pathways then we would be agile uh, that's yes, that's sir, my 100% yeah. 100% as you are saying the meaning so we are very rigid is, so we should not be calling ourselves agile yes the no in my opinion uh, see what happens is in some of the institutions or maybe in all the institutions so training for the students with respect to the uh, jobs okay at the end of uh, uh, seventh semester or maybe eighth semester they will be attending interviews so training will be given to them and some of the trainers themselves okay they assess students and continuous change in the curriculum adaptation of uh, okay things which are there in the industry then uh, academics industry interaction is going on see everything is going on so but yes uh, what you said is right we are not implementing it properly that is the only thing we are assessing students we are assessing students right yes sir yeah yeah okay i i think if you have a discussion i would say more but i don't want to take up your time thanks ah no issue sir thank you thank you thank you so advantages <clears throat> solutions are prototyped and the results are verified of course so every sprint okay gives you a result and that is verified best solutions are accepted after the feedback obviously we will uh, okay get the best solutions which are accepted before approval itself the solutions are experienced by the client right so final product giving him a final product and giving him pieces of the product okay and giving a space for improvement so better uh, improvement can be given to that particular product so before approval itself the solutions are experienced by the client so in, to improve user experience short iterations are also possible so in order to improve the user experience shorter iterations okay uh, instead of having a uh, okay three uh, sprints let us have okay shorter iterations even shorter iterations and the improvement can be focused on so we can use small cross functional teams incremental delivery is possible of course uh, instead of delivering in 12 months what we can do each month we can deliver a bit of the project itself 
fast feedback helps the designers and the developers, of course. So by using this uh, strategy or let us say methodology, so obviously continuous improvement is possible. <coughs> So business process modeling, what do you, uh, what do we exactly uh, mean by business process models? So let us consider a mechanical industry or raw material is as has, has, has entered into the industry, let us say. <coughs> so. Hello. Yes, sir. Oh, you are speaking on phone, I think. All right. So. So. <laughs> All right, so the raw material is processed through different processes while it becomes a final product. Right? So what is BPM or business process modeling? So business process management or modeling is a way of breaking down. Yes, sir. It is true, sir. It is true. Very true. <coughs> is a way of breaking down business processes into their most basic elements. So number of business processes will be that, okay, starting from marketing to, let us say, finally, manufacturing division. So all the business processes are bro broken down into their basic elements. The tasks and activities, for instance, okay, that business carries out. What does this exactly show us? It shows clearly and transparently how a product or service transforms as it moves to an organization's process sequence after a near real time. So how exactly, okay, the product is transformed? What exactly are the processes involved? What exactly is there in that particular process? What are the basic elements of that process? So each and everything will be shared or showed by the business process models or BPM, let us say. <coughs> so why is it required anyways? Or <clears throat> let us say the design thinking in business process modeling. So why exactly the process models are required? Because they mediate or they make way or they communicate between the stakeholders. Between the stakeholders. Each one of them, let us say, from starting to the end. Okay, business analysts, maybe process participants, software architects, software, okay, programmers or whoever it is, whoever it is, a small person working in that particular firm, even to the customer who is getting that product out of it. Okay, so everyone can communicate with respect to this or with the help of this business process modeling. So these models, they provide a shared understanding so that everyone can contribute knowledge. So obviously, when you know each and everything going on in this particular firm, each and every process, okay, which is happening on that product, which is happening on that raw material. So the knowledge is shared. That is, we can contribute our knowledge. So this can be done like this, okay. Instead of using a lathe, we can use a milling machine, right. Instead of using a milling cutter, okay, horizontal milling uh, machine, we can use a vertical milling machine. So these are the inputs which everyone can give. They can share their knowledge. They can share their knowledge because there is a transparency in this uh, business process model or business process models. <clears throat> so what is this BPM? It is the combination of various process related steps. So there may be process mapping, process discovery, process simulation, okay, process analysis, and even process improvement. So this uh, BPM, uh, it has Okay, replaced a lot of uh, efficient packages, organizational efficient uh, packages. So let me say TMS or Diamond Motion Study, TKM, Total Quality Management. Okay, it has replaced all of these and uh, because it is very transparent, of course. So there will be a mega process, let us say, that is conversion of raw material into useful product. Under that, we have major processes. Okay. So what are the major processes? There may be, okay, lathe, milling machine, or different types of machines which are involved in that. Sub processes, in the major process, again, we have different processes. In lathe, we may do uh, different types of operations, let us say. Activity, what exactly is the activity happening at this ground level? Then the task. So this is 
what the you know uh, pieces okay what they have made of mega process so what are the advantages of bpm they align operations with uh, business strategy they improve process communication of course <clears throat> increase control and consistency when each and everything is known okay about the processes happening so these things are very very uh, okay they can come in handy improve operational efficiency of course the operational efficiency will also be improved if each and every okay task activity process is known gain competitive advantage of course uh, see by inculcating uh, knowledge or by inculcating transparency let us say in the models so obviously knowledge will be shared better solutions will be obtained and due to the better solutions competitive okay advantage will also be obtained so by revealing the ways the way things are done at an organization and comparing that with the way things should be done okay so bpm highlights dependencies and relationships between people process and technology so what exactly this uh, bpm does so it is bringing the whole process to pieces correct right? so it is revealing how the things have to be done at organization in the organization at every level at every level and it is comparing that with the things should be done what is happening and what should happen okay and it highlights the dependencies also so what is dependent on what which team is dependent on which team okay relationship between the people then process and technology and by seeing all these things what we can do at at the end we can come to a conclusion where exactly the improvement has to be done where we can okay where we can input okay the knowledge and improve the product and improve the solution for the problem so similarly design thinking is also okay focused on improvement but it takes the end user or customer experience at a starting point so i'm we are talking about the business process models wherein okay the processes are bought into uh, brought into pieces okay level of pieces but here what happens in the design thinking initially itself it will take end user or customer experience at the starting point so it uses empathy to understand the way people feel about using a service or product including where their frustrations like that's what i was talking about emotional uh, okay feelings are also considered when we do empathization okay then builds on that knowledge to create improvements with the ultimate goal of making customers lives and experiences better and more fulfilling so both the uh, goals goals of both the things okay business process modeling as well as design thinking is same okay finally improvement improvement in the solution of <coughs> problem right so we know this uh, five key phases there is a challenge how do i solve it i have learned something about it how do i act upon it there is an opportunity what do i create we can create okay solutions for the problems there is an idea how do i build upon it i tried something how do i evolve it so the similarities to bpm are very clear here okay process improvement requires the same approach of identifying a challenge right so what exactly is the challenge we are facing so when we talk about the pieces of the process so each and every process is shown to everyone here there is a transparency so communication is more so we can think about this particular process only and everyone can give their own solutions for the problem facing by that inefficient let us say process inefficient process okay so some process is inefficient it is not delivering uh, up to the mark so there is a challenge faced by that particular process so when we think about it okay or adopt this design thinking let us say the same principle of design thinking we can clearly understand what exactly is the problem and we can come to a conclusion by discussions and all those things and say brainstorming and very very uh, uh, very much processes are there which are related to the uh, design thinking process so using all these things we can come to a conclusion why this process is inefficient what is the real problem about it so once we know what is the real problem about it we can go for the solution part also So that's what see after all uh, without a clear view of the current state operational structure and business process landscape to analyze the risk of producing a solution which is in fact not fit for purpose 
okay so that is what see when 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 we do not know how exactly okay or what exactly is the current state of this of, of the operational structure or business process is okay when we consider a business complete business or an industry how exactly the processes are happening if we do not know exactly what is happening in that process we cannot say this is the exact solution for it if at all we say this is the exact solution we are risking okay we are risking the well-being of this industry that is so what will happen it will not fit to the purpose of course it will not fit to the purpose and it will cause issues in the other parts of the system also so what are the benefits they both uh, go hand in hand so they unlock a range of powerful potential and lucrative benefits including competitive advantage of course gain through a willingness to innovate then double down on ideas that work and discard ones that do not okay we will come to a conclusion this is the best idea or this is the best solution for the problem and this is not and this is not so by this we can gain the competitive advantage being moving beyond the traditional process maps and case models to more customer centric and human scale products and services that's what hey everything is now uh, see people are talking customer language so obviously so <clears throat> We will move beyond the traditional process maps and case models and build customer centric and human scale products and services, of course. Then, pooling collective ease and enhancing collaboration through building multidisciplinary teams to focus on a single problem, harnessing natural empathy. Natural empathy, it is very important, as I've already told you. So, leading to a better understanding of the needs and challenges of the customer, generating more revenue by ensuring a deeper level of customer satisfaction obviously if the customer is satisfied deeper to his heart he will give the next product to you or next uh, let us say project to you or the firm okay which makes him happy and he will refer the same firm to his colleagues also who are okay uh, thinking about a new let us say a business development or a software development whatever it is So agile and virtual collaboration okay uh, there is a book called as flat world uh, and the author is uh, thomas friedman why he sees the world as flat all we all of us know that our earth is round in nature but the world is described here as flat why is that so it is because of the technology and internet it is because of the technology and internet which we have nowadays right sitting wherever we want we can skype right we can see faces we can even do business right even in america if you are sitting in america you can do business in india even if you are sitting in india you can do business in america whatever it is so irrespective of zones irrespective of cultures irrespective of languages you can work So this Thomas uh, Friedman explains flattening as the combination of a personal computer with fiber optic micro cable using the internet with the help of a working software. So working remote and in a global environment is not so uncommon anymore. As we know, we are working from home. Okay, this program is organized online. So I'm speaking here, you're listening somewhere. Okay, sitting in your uh, okay places and has gained acceptance as a general working norm in last couple of decades of course but we have seen this culture uh, from past two years maybe because of uh, the pandemic with insourcing outsourcing and companies operating in a global environment they do business globally with the management headquartered at a single location that is the management let us say is headquartered at london okay <clears throat> they do operate with other regions using the technology so this means business runs globally and hence projects within the organizations also path globally now as we have already discussed about the agile methodology is it possible is it possible to adopt agile methodology in virtual collaboration that is what the thing we have to explain it to the students is it really possible <clears throat> yes it is possible when we consider a case study let us say okay i was uh, referring to it so 
So agile methodology, as we know, it accepts changes any time, correct? Compared to that of a waterfall model, it accepts changes at any time. So collaboration between collocated teams is better when we uh, when we consider the agile methodology. That is collocated teams in the sense sitting inside an office or inside a building. Okay, so collaboration between these people is very much essential in order to make this agile methodology a grand success, let us say. Okay, or adopt the agile methodology. So besides coordination, interaction, development, planning, review, retrospective sessions, etc. also immensely reduce time and effort. In order to do all these things, people have to be there together. So this is what our uh, uh, mental uh, thoughts tell us because it is agile. Okay, agile methodology which we are adopting and changes are there every now and then the changes will be adopted. So is it possible, really possible working remotely and implementing this agile methodology? So now the need is for working remotely itself, right? So this was a paper actually uh, was published by Azar Kwaja PMP. So <clears throat> he is actually actually a person in IT industry. He is uh, okay ongoing or doing his research. So he has published this paper uh, with respect to the agile project management with virtual teams. So he he undertook a major project with his organization and he implemented agile methodology with team members located in four countries. Okay, different countries. Team members are located in different countries. He has he has taken up a project and he has implemented the agile management methodology. So he has concluded the paper by saying that the agile methodology can be implemented virtually also by the people sitting in different locations also. But but there are some vital essentials. There are some vital essentials to be contemplated for effectively managing the distributed team members. What are those? First thing, allow transparency. As I have already told you, transparency is very important. Okay, company as a whole or the team lead should establish a transparent environment. Okay, that will provide trust, sense of trust in the team members. Okay, they will come forward and they will just tell their decisions okay about the problem solutions and these can be aligned okay these decisions can be aligned with the company goals and visions so if there is no transparency if a team leader is behaving in such a manner that okay in a, in a egoistic manner let us say the system is not at all transparent so what will happen no one will know what is happening and no one will suggest any solution for that for that whatever he says we do and finally what will happen the end product will not be. Yes, ma'am. Anyone can teach this to students. Any anyone can teach this to students. So this is what the topic exactly is, and I have collected the uh, okay some of the information uh, about these topics in uh, module three. So you can collect uh, <clears throat> the information about the topics with respect to the different modules also. So you can teach no one there is no restriction AICT has told very clearly because of uh, you know less admissions in the mechanical and civil uh, this one you can learn uh, uh, you can do courses on artificial intelligence and you can teach so that is a different matter okay anyways coming back to this next vital thing is establish a culture of continuous improvement Okay, we should, the, the, the team lead or the person responsible for that should always drive improvements within the team. So you should recognize potential improvement opportunities and you should obtain ideas from each member of the team. You should listen to the suggestions, rationally take appropriate steps. Communication, as I told you, it is very important in any kind of industry uh, we speak about. So communication. Uh, when, when communication is very good, so automatically the solution for the problem will also be given okay, perfectly. So the communication, let us say uh, the communication is via emails, phone calls, meetings. Okay, or when, when we consider about a very large enterprise, we have certain ERP tools also, which gives you the complete information about okay, the resource planning or anything like that. Okay, we have different tools in order to communicate. So construction of a rhythm. 
okay so three pillars of scrum i told you about the framework of uh, agile methodology so scrum is also one of the framework so three pillars of scrum is transparency inspection and adaptations transparent be transparent so inspect the solutions and adapt them finally so it is important that a tempo is created which operates around these pillars of scrum having said that this drives in creating a self collaborating team which is a prime eminence of agile so self collaboration in the sense we should decide ourselves okay management will, will not say or management should not say you should become a team originally meaning a team you should not become a team you should become a team okay they will not say or they may not say we should in ourselves okay think like this and become a self collaborating team in order to achieve the goal of the let us say the form generate a culture of courage and flexibility so i told you while testing or while building the prototype so innovations are very much okay uh, innovations come in uh, uh, come in handy that is we will think about innovations what exactly will be the solution how can i implement this solution is this solution okay adaptable i don't know whether it is adaptable or not so i should give my team members the lenience or okay i should encourage them to try something new because failure is never bad failure is never bad but there is a concept concept called as fail fast so you should fail fast and regain your consciousness and again you can you should go back to the ideate or even the next stage right so however here the key argument is to fail fast establish an environment where the team is courageous to take steps to try out something new that's what say when when we are afraid of trying something new nothing can be done nothing can be done no innovation will be done right so the idea is to reduce the delay that's what when you fail you should fail fast otherwise there will be delay detect the failure fast and further twist your initiatives go back to the initial stage and twist your initiatives establish a sustainable environment to play balance so so what has become now uh, <clears throat> So as we all know, so people are working from home, right? They will be having team meetings at around 10 30, 11, 11 30 p.m. Usually, when they used to go to the uh, you know industries, IT industries directly, they had nine to five job. Uh, even the meetings were uh, arranged in that particular time only, within that time frame only. But now, even at 11 30 or 12, because I have seen, I am telling you. So because of that, okay. So what has happened now? <clears throat> Work-life balance is okay. Uh, not correct. Okay, work and life are not balanced perfectly. So, always the team should be encouraged to have a work-life balance. Okay, and they should be given a sustainable environment. You cannot make them work for around, uh, okay, uh, 20 hours or 21 hours or 22 hours. Okay, they cannot sleep whenever they want or they cannot sleep whenever you want. So, that is what the point is. I'm not uh, pointing at uh, you people. I'm pointing about, pointing at the people in the industry. Visualize everything. Very important footstep. So planning of tasks. What will come ahead? What should be done? Which team is to be involved in it? Okay. So visual interpretation of tasks always have to be completed. So solution has to be established. Okay. <clears throat> and we should see who is working on what. Align together. All these things comes under the visualization only so everything should be visualized initially itself so the best example uh, as we already know being the covid 19 pandemic which taught employers to be agile and employers offered flexible time options to employees we can take the examples of our own institutions also so now scenario oh, it's already four crossing four so let us speed up scenario based prototyping so when i consider uh, mechanical engineering product so we can build a prototype and we can say this is how the final product looks like this will be the parts of it but when you consider okay when you consider a software complex software an app let us say there will be multiple users involved in it end users involved in it so <coughs> in such case the tangible prototypes are not at all feasible the tangible prototypes are not at all feasible so in order to overcome this scenario based prototyping approach can be proposed 
for designing complex software systems that is based on models both structural and behavior behavioral right so the approach will support the stepwise and interactive enrichment of the prototype model the traceability between the artifacts collected during earlier design phases and the scenarios scenarios that's what i told okay uh, if i consider okay any that's what see app development cricket okay what should be done now scenario based in the sense so when i click on the first uh, button okay that icon the app should open how it should open that is another case okay once it is open i should select my team india is my team i'll click on this it should come to the left only or to the right that depends on the end user okay how exactly he wants it to the left now i have clicked on the clicked on my team so it will show 20 lists or uh, 20 uh, members of the team in which i have to select 11 of them let us say so should it show 20 or should it show 14 or should it show 11 only so this is what the scenario is one by one okay sequence of okay things happening is nothing but the scenario what exactly is the scenario how exactly the app should be operated okay this is one scenario I, i'm just giving you an example all right so <clears throat> So that's what scenarios describe a sequence of inner events illustrating the activities of one or more people in a real world setting the goals are to be realistic detailed and concise since this is difficult to do quickly it is best to cover only a limited period of time in the scenario okay there again uh, exist two types of scenarios one is use scenario we can distinguish between these two use scenarios are ones okay are a form of analysis of the interviews and represent what happens today in real world settings use scenarios whatever we are experiencing now okay real world scenarios design scenarios we have used scenarios now we are revising them okay these are the design scenarios are the revised version of use scenarios that illustrate how a technology might be used use scenarios in the sense okay cricket uh, we have 11 players on both the teams Okay, one is a keeper, one, is, one will be bowling and two will be <coughs> batting. So, fielders will be spread in the field. This is the real world field scenario what we have used scenario. How exactly the app has to be transferred or app has to be made? Exactly the same way, right? Exactly in the same way. How exactly we should play? See, he is playing a straight cut. He is playing a square cut. He is playing the, the batsman, okay? And the bowler is putting, uh, let us say, uh, off spin, leg spin, whatever it is. So, this is the use scenario which we have in our real world. But design scenarios are how exactly the new technology should be. How exactly the new technology should be. It is the revised version of use scenarios. So uh, when I consider uh, <coughs> prototyping, we have rapid prototyping, which is also known as throwaway prototyping and evolutionary prototyping. So rapid prototyping, when I say, so what I do, I just uh, take a paper, I'll have a pen, I'll write what I'm going to do each and every step okay and i'll show it to the customer if he says okay i'll just throw it to the bin and i'll start working on the software development but when i consider evolutionary prototyping so it becomes the base of the product it becomes the base of the product okay beta let us say beta uh, the role beta okay beta apps uh, beta version of the apps correct so this beta itself is considered may be considered as the evolutionary prototypes and on them only we are going to build the original products and release them in the ios or even android so that's what developing an app for ios or android and giving it to the customer for feedback so obviously revisions are must so every time we need to show the prototypes in front of or present the prototypes in front of the customer or end users and we should okay get the feedback from them instead of uh, see when i consider okay these softwares or apps so <clears throat> betas are one of the uh, types of prototypes as far as uh, my knowledge is concerned otherwise photos okay using photoshop illustrator or any other app you can uh, the developer can develop photos in which you can clearly see how exactly the app looks okay what is the next step that is again a photo photo okay with real uh, scenarios how exactly the app looks what comes out when the screen is opened what comes out when you click on that icon okay the first thing then if you click on the second icon what comes next okay this is what the uh, scenario exactly is correct so this is illustrated in front of the <coughs> customer 
and as i have told you earlier uh, ui expert user uh, experience experts we don't have to uh, okay give the demo in front of the customer itself every time so by design thinking we have obtained okay so much of information we have collected data about the customer and we have told and we have formulated a problem now once we have formulated a problem the same problem will be looked into by the experts in the team itself or in the industry itself and they will be experiencing the app development they will see whether this is okay or not they will give the feedback finally we can roll it out to the customers so when i say scenario based uh, prototyping so these scenarios are rich stories of interaction plain text pictures sketches screenshots etc storyboards okay a board filled with a story scenarios make us think about the design in detail and notice potential problems before they happen so instead of directly uh, you know getting into app development we can okay based on these scenarios build a prototype okay wherein <coughs> potential problems will be noticed okay we can notice the potential problems and then uh what happens if this problem persists that can also be known the consequences then we can change that and have a different solution for the problem thank you very much